We have witnessed in the last video how men of science, in this context, the astronomers, have extended lands to prove and disapprove claims about planetary motions. It is worth noting here that ancient astronomers have relied their observations using the unaided eye, and yet they have documented and established theories about the mysteries behind the planetary objects. With the invention of telescope marked the start of revolutionary observations in astronomy. This simple device that made far things look near gave observers a new perspective and our view of Earth and in the universe changed forever. The first person to apply for a patent of telescope was a Dutch eyeglass maker named Hans Lippershey. In 1608, Lippershey laid claim to a device that could magnify objects three times. His telescope was then composed of concave eyepiece aligned with a convex objective lens. But the invention was surrounded with so many issues. When several accounts claimed that he stole this design from another eyeglass maker, Zacharias Janssen. Janssen and Lippershey lived in the same town and both worked on making optical instruments. Because there was no evidence to support that Lippershey stole Janssen's work, he was the one credited for the invention of telescope, while Janssen is credited with inventing compound microscope. In 1609, Galileo heard about the Dutch perspective glasses of Lippershey and Janssen and within days, he designed his own. Even if he didn't see an actual one, he made use of refraction to bend rays and reflection via mirrors. I have a separate lecture about the properties of lights with the links I posted in the description of this video. In his self-made telescope, he was able to gather light and with the right combination of proper curvature and material for the lenses that were placed at an appropriate distance from each other. In his design, he used a lead tube having two lenses with different radii of convergence with one convex and one concave lens. These two lenses here have two flat sides that meet in the middle that allowed him to magnify distant objects for several times. He was the first to point a telescope skyward, which he was able to document a lot of things about the planetary objects in the sky. No other human in mankind history had able to observe a lot of things than what he did using his telescope. At this point of the video, let us list down some of his observations. First, his observation of the Earth's moon. The prevailing thinking about the moon during Galileo's time is that it is above the heavens and has a perfect surface that moves in the perfect circular path. Using his telescope, Galileo found out that the surface of the moon was rough and has a lot of depressions and bulges. Galileo observed that the moon's surface is like the Earth itself with chains of mountains and depth of valleys. And with his knowledge in mathematics, by the way, he was a professor in University of Padua, he tried to calculate the heights of the mountains in the moon by means of their shadows and geometrical theories. He also observed Jupiter. He was able to reveal that the planet has four star-like objects surrounding it. He noticed that the objects move every night and sometimes disappear behind or in front of Jupiter. Based on this, Galileo explained that the objects are similar to the moon of the Earth that orbit around the planet. This is the first time when an observation of another moon orbiting other planet was made. Thus, it weakens Ptolemaic model. Currently, the four moons of Jupiter are known to be the Galilean satellites named Io, Ganymede, Europa, and Callisto. Another important observation of Galileo was the phases of Venus. Galileo observed the sequence of Venus that resembles the phases of the Earth's moon. This even was not within the assumptions of the Ptolemaic model but can be accounted by Copernicus' sun-centered model or earth-centered taconic model, where 
other planets orbiting the sun as it orbit the earth. He observed even more and later recorded other important astronomical findings such as Saturn's ring, the appearance of sunspots or the dark region in the surface of the sun, and even explained that the stars of the Milky Way are too far from the earth. The more Galileo looked in the sky, the more he was convinced of the sun-centered Copernican model of the solar system. In 1632, Galileo then published a book, The Dialogue, which is a collection of his observations from 1625 to 1629. Here, he re-examined the Ptolemaic and Copernican systems and tried to discuss several astronomical phenomena. This can be considered as Galileo's best work, as it destroys the Ptolemaic system and established the Copernican theory as the supreme model for the solar system. He dedicated this to Pope Urban VIII, but since the Catholic Church supported the idea that the Earth is the center of the universe, he was charged by the legal body of the Catholic Church. His ideas were considered heretical, and Galileo was called to appear before the Inquisition in Rome in 1633. He was sentenced to life imprisonment and died on January 8, 1642. Elsewhere in Europe, scientists began improving the telescope made by Galileo. Johannes Kepler studied the optics used in these and began to design a telescope with two convex lenses which made the images appear upside down. More of these concepts in our optics lecture. Then, from the works of Kepler, Newton reasoned it was better to make a telescope out of mirrors rather than lenses and built a reflecting telescope in 1668. Centuries later, the reflecting telescope would dominate astronomy, which opened so many discoveries in the field of astronomy and cosmology. And that class is the history of how we found out that the Earth is not the center of the universe. Again, this is Gilmar de Castro, and see you in the next video.